Well, they got me, boys, and they got me good. Honestly, I'm, I'm pretty upset. I'm pretty disappointed, but uh, I'm only really upset and disappointed in myself for believing that GGG would not only make a notable that worked, but they would tease a notable on their like official teasers that they were doing for it and then make that notable essentially completely useless. Now, this is gonna be a two part video. The first part is me gonna be complaining about the fact that I got super baited by GGG. The second part is gonna be some crucible feedback because I think there are some uh, issues with the league, but uh, let's complain first. Cause you know, complaining is cathartic. It'll make me feel better about how I got completely baited and uh, my league start build essentially just completely failed in what I wanted it to do because uh, GGG, you know, teased the notable that is completely worthless. So what am I talking about? I am talking about the ball lightning and ice spear fire projectiles in a circle and projectiles return to you. Now, ice spear functions perfectly fine. There's no issues here. Ball lightning will fire projectiles in a circle. However, the part that says ball lightning projectiles return to you, um, well, we'll see for yourself. Okay, so we're going to put ball lightning linked with slower proj and we're going to fire it. And as you can see, it doesn't return. So, you know, I thought to myself, I'm like, okay, maybe it's going a little bit too slow. Maybe if I speed it up a little bit, it'll return, right? So, uh, classic standard ball lightning with no um, projectile speed on it in the link uh, doesn't return either. So I thought, okay, well, let's put faster projectiles in there just to see if it's broken or not. But faster projectiles in and it flies out and it returns for maybe like a third of the distance. So as you can see, I will cast it from here and the point that it returns to is not even on my screen. It was right here at the very edge. So yeah, um, this notable is completely worthless because one, stacking projectile speed makes ball lightning completely worthless. Um, oh yeah, one other use case is that if it hits a wall, it does bounce. So there's that, I guess. But it's stacking projectile speed on ball lightning is completely worthless because the way that this ability works is that you want to stack as much slower proj speed as well as AOE so that it stays as long as it can on the enemy and overlaps them and continues to tick because it's got a certain duration that it lasts for. I based my entire league start around the fact that I was going to potentially at very best get double the damage of my ball lightning. And what I thought at very worst, like just a pretty significant buff to it, because I figured that it would either turn around and do a full other duration coming back the other way, which was a little bit of hopium, but I figured at the very worst that it would go out and halfway through the duration it would return, meaning it would be significantly easier to get that full overlap on enemies. If you're enjoying this video or it ends up helping you out, consider supporting me and my content by giving this video a like and subscribing down to the YouTube channel to stay up to date with all the latest videos. However, um, it does neither of those things, it's just worthless. So I'm a little bummed uh, to say the least. The build was functioning okay, but I had to pump a lot more into damage to get you know enough damage to do the things that I wanted to do. Um, my Atlas went all right. Um, I got Eater of Worlds, Exarch, uh, Deathless, and I cleared up into some tier 16 maps with this build, but I essentially quit playing this build on day two. You might have seen my previous video where we were swapping to Steel Champ because, you know, that was the build that I was going to play next, but um, I didn't expect to completely skip this build. But I, I'm just too frustrated to continue with it, to be honest, because the whole idea of it was that I really wanted to uh, have, you know, my ball lightning projectiles return to me, shoot a whole bunch of them out, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, if you were planning on a ball lightning league start, I'm sorry that you got debated too, but this has been confirmed by GGG to be intended mechanic use. It is intended to work this way. They said scale projectile speed, um, AKA either they don't know how this ability works or they just intended for it to be bad. So that is the case with ball lightning. So now let's talk about Crucible. So the thing about Crucible is that there are quite a bit of issues with this league mechanic. Now, I feel that most of these issues are fixable and one of the big ones is going to just be, there is just no loot in this mechanic whatsoever. Um, it drops the same, if not less loot than other various random enemies. Like when you go into the Crucible, you fight some enemies, they kind of just drop the same loot that any normal mobs do in the zone. And yet they are sometimes close to 10 times more difficult than the normal mobs. So if you are thinking of like an efficiency standpoint from just killing the mobs for loot, there is 
absolutely no reason to interact with the Crucible mechanic whatsoever. So realistically, the only real loot that happens from Crucible that is worth it at all are the Igneous Geodes, which you can kind of see here, they turn into these primeval remnants. These can get you a little bit of money and they let you interact with the end game tree and stuff like that. So this is at least something, right? And these drop a decent amount more since they did hotfix uh, a few things about Crucible. But these in and of themselves just simply aren't enough to really make up for the fact that there is just no bonus to loot whatsoever. Now, that would be fine, like, by itself, right? But a lot of people have been complaining about the difficulty of the mobs themselves, right? The thing about it is that I don't feel the difficulty of the mobs themselves is actually that big of a deal. The problem with it is that the difficulty of the mobs does not match up with the rewards that you get from it, because the only rewards that you receive are these igneous geodes, as well as the potential to channel on a weapon or a shield. So the difficulty of these mobs does not match the loot dropped. So since the loot that drops does not match the difficulty of the mobs at all, it makes it really hard for me to rationalize in any way to try and do this mechanic unless those items that I channeled gave us a ton of drops, right? Like it really was an insane amount of profit from it. However, um, I watched a video by Grimrow. I've talked to my community. I've done a little bit of looking myself and looked at the numbers and stuff like that. And the actual like drop rate of the good crucible itemized passives is just really, really poor. The only ones that you can really rationalize would be the ones that drop like divines or the ones that drop like the really expensive items or large stacks of currency. And if you can't channel the crucible to full every single time in like juiced tier 16 maps, the time that you spend fighting these mobs is not worth it whatsoever. Like the only time that I could rationally see this being worth it is that if you like one shot all of the mobs in a juiced crucible like tier 16 map and you channel the entire time, then maybe it could end up being worth it. But right now the drop rate of these like good passives, we're talking like the divine ones or like chaos ones or things like that, is simply just not enough to make it worthwhile. Because what ends up happening most of the time is you sit there, you channel up to the first node, the mobs are super difficult, they don't drop any items, most of the time you don't actually get a good result from the base that you've dropped, right? So you don't really get a good result. So you just toss it on the ground and you run and you start with the next one. The money is just not really worth it. Now, the next problem is that this mechanic is basically standard for people using unique weapons. So the problem here is that since there's no use in doing this for loot, right? There's no use in churning through a bunch of crucible stuff. You realistically are only going to be doing this to like power up some weapons that you want to be able to use for your character, which is fine in and of itself. But anybody who is using a unique weapon essentially doesn't really get to interact with this mechanic until they've gotten to one of the end game mechanics to unlock their weapon. Now, this is compounded on top of the fact that it is standard for people who are using unique weapons or people who are finished with their weapon. So it doesn't drop any loot. And if you're using a unique weapon, you basically can't interact with it until you get one of those end game crucible maps that allows you to unlock the unique weapon. And then once you've finished with the weapon, there's no reason to interact with the mechanic pretty much at all. You are better off just doing literally anything else besides this. So these are the main issues that I think that it's facing. There are a couple of different mobs that are pretty insanely tuned, I think. And I do feel that some of them are just significantly more dangerous than the other ones. One particular thing about a lot of the mobs in Crucible is the fact that they have teleports that can kind of just like jump behind you or assassinate you really quick. And that feels really bad a lot of the time when so many of these mobs can just get on top of you so easily. But I personally think that the difficulty of the mobs is not as big of a deal as these other ones. The fact that there's just no loot, the drop rate for good Crucible item pass is essentially non-existent and the like fact that it's just kind of a standard for people who aren't currently upgrading their weapon so these are the issues now fixing these issues i i feel that these issues are all fixable thankfully and the way that you do this is that you adjust the loot to match the difficulty so I'm fine with things in Path of Exile being difficult as long as fighting that difficult enemy ends up in an adequate reward. 
This is something that they were really trying super hard to fix in the base game with Arch Nemesis, and I do feel that they've mostly succeeded there. When you find that really super difficult enemy, it drops a bunch of items most of the time that are at least somewhat useful. Crucible, I've fought in like high tier red maps with like a hundred rarity and like 30 or 40 quantity and a fully charged crucible that spawns a unique mob and it drops nothing on my filter and i'm only on like strict so it just drops nothing on my filter i don't see anything that actually drops from it. it's just like a bunch of blue items and a bunch of rare items and they're all garbage that's the vast majority of the uniques that i've encountered that that's all that they drop i think i found a map one time so the loot that you get does not match the difficulty in any way whatsoever i don't know how you fix this but i'm not a game designer you just need to like pump up the loot a little bit in some way however however much you need to do it whether or not you do it through the you know the itemized drops uh being improved or you do it through just more raw drop slash currency coming from like the actual enemies themselves. I, I don't know how you go about it, but the current state of it is just simply really, really, really bad. Now, as for the like fixing the problem with standard is that I, I simply don't understand why, um, why are uniques gated? Like, there's no reason for uniques to be gated here. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever, because the way that it works is that you just finally get into the crucible that allows you to unlock your unique, and then you just channel it in normal maps. So what's the point of gating basically everyone that's playing the game for their like random leveling uniques? Why are we gating people from just having some cool passives while they're leveling up on a weapon that they're going to get rid of? People at endgame are going to be able to do it anyways, so what's the point here? I feel like this is just like one of those things where it's like, I, I just like scratch my head and wonder why that they decided to gate uniques. Is this because they want like rares to be better and people to use more rares? Well, that's the case anyways. People already almost always use rare weapons and shields at this point. There's like a few unique shields that are good and like a handful of unique weapons that are okay. I don't feel that there's any reason to gate the uniques. Just just don't like let people upgrade their uniques normally. It, it doesn't matter, right? So adjusting these two things fixes most of the issues with a mechanic. Now, this is not even talking about UX or UI issues. Now, if you don't know what UX UI is, um, UX is user experience and UI is user interface. So the user interface is just going to be the actual like buttons and stuff that you interact with. The user experience is how it happens and how you interact with them, right? So the problem here with Crucible is that there is just so many blatant and obvious issues with this UI and with the UX of it. The issue with um, channeling in particular is like, I, I know it feels good to like channel into it and it feels really epic and like you're like channeling the power and getting more out of it. But when it comes to an actual gameplay feel, the channeling just feels terrible. Um, th this is just a this is just an absolutely miserable feeling mechanic for multiple reasons. One of the main ones is the fact that if you start channeling and then an enemy shows up that like walks in off screen, you're just kind of screwed. Honestly, there's not really much that you can do if that enemy is dangerous. You kind of just have to drop whatever you're doing and try to kill it without exiting the circle. So you have to do this like song and dance where you got to really go and scout out the area around the crucible. That takes a bunch of extra time and you're not being efficient to make sure that you've killed all the enemies before you do it. And then you start channeling. And although they've made it a little bit more granular and a little bit more obvious, I, I just wish there was a secondary bar that would just show us how close we are to actually finishing it. Or even better, just let us click a button that says like 20, 40, 60, 80, 100% charged, or even make it more granular by 10. Let us like slide a little thing, choose how difficult we want it to be, show us how much it's increasing the stats of the mob so we can get a more obvious idea of how powerful they're going to be compared to normal mobs, and then click OK. I know that it looks cool and thematic to do it, but actually interacting with this mechanic feels horrific currently. Just make it so that we can actually have like obvious feedback, obvious showing in numbers on the screen to tell how difficult the mobs are going to be. This is a problem that was literally solved in like Metamorph, honestly. So I don't understand why this mechanic has such difficulty with just giving us the information that we need. So this is where we're at. I think that these are fixable issues, definitely. And I hope that within the next week or so, we really get all of these addressed because the problem is, is that currently this kind of just feels like standard league for a lot of people. And if interacting with the mechanic is just an overall negative feeling, a negative like drops, negative response, negative everything. If all the feedback that you get from playing this mechanic is negative, 
people are probably just going to quit and they're probably just not going to play with it whatsoever. And that's super unfortunate because I think there are a lot of really cool things about these crucible passive trees. Um, oh yeah, one additional issue that I think that I didn't talk about is that way too many build destroying passives in the first slot. This is like, there's way too many of them, right? Like if you get a passive that's just like, you can no longer apply chill or you can no longer apply elemental ailments. There's way too many that destroy your build in the first slot. I'm pretty sure that Chris said that there weren't going to be that many of them. So the, the fix of that is just like, remove the massive amount of downside tier one notables. That, that's it, that's all you gotta do. Like there doesn't need to be so many downside ones. And there's a lot of them that just completely brick your build. Now you can use a scouring orb to remove it, but that means that you basically can't use the rest of the tree. So really unfortunate there. Forgot about that one. However, remembered it at the last moment, at the very least. And that is going to be it for the video. So don't play ball lightning. Uh, hopefully you didn't get too hard baited like I did with your league start with your mechanic not even actually functioning in any meaningful way. And as for the crucible stuff, I do feel that there is at least something that can be done about the Crucible League. I feel like these problems are fixable, and I really do hope that the devs at GGG are able to get this mechanic functioning properly, because I think that it could be a fun mechanic if we just address the loot, address the annoyance with the UI and the UX, and uh, yeah, just make it worth our time, essentially is what it comes to. So remember, boys, if you enjoy this content, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest videos, and stay safe out there in Ray Class, and I'll see you guys in the next video.